In this video, I'm going to show you the new feature in Zapier that allows you to upload files directly inside your ChatGPT blog. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so I'm going to guide you through this example. In this case, we are going to be continuously analyzing new Google Sheets that are going to be uploaded to our account. So let's just start with a trigger. In this case, uh, you can see that the event is going to be new spreadsheet. So the whole idea is going to be that whenever we upload a new spreadsheet to our Google Sheet account, we want to perform a data analysis on that sheet. So you want to choose that event and then continue. Then you want to connect your Google Sheets with your Zapier account. It's super simple. You can directly do it over here where you use your credentials or you can do that prior to creating your Zap in the app section and add the connection over there. I have already done that, so I'm going to continue. And in this case, you want to choose your drive. So I have just one and it's called my Google Drive. So I'm going to choose that one and I'm going to continue. And right now you want to test this trigger, whether it's successfully pulling out data from your Google Sheet account. So in this case, I have already done that. And I have some few examples over here that I can use. And in this spreadsheet that I'm using for this test, I'm going to be using the one with the title called Revenue Spreadsheet. If I go and show you how the spreadsheet looks like, you can see I only have two. We are going to go to the Revenue Spreadsheet. And this is how our data looks like. So we have five different columns. We have the year, then we have quarters, and we have the value, how much revenue we have generated in each quarter. You can see that the data is not really structured properly, and this is on purpose because I want to show you that ChatGPT is going to be able to handle these. Now, keep in mind that you can actually choose which uh, spreadsheet you want to work with in the test. If you click on this button, find new records, you are going to be able to see that we are going to find a new record that we can use right now and continue the test with. So I'm going to continue with selected record. And right now, as your first action, you want to go and search for ChatGPT block. And in this case, the event is not going to be the conversation that you are probably used to using. But in this case, Zapier has added a new feature and especially a new event called conversation with assistant. It's pretty much the same thing, but here it's going to be a more of a conversation rather than just sending a prompt to ChatGPT and then getting answer. Additionally, the main difference here is that you are going to be able to upload files if you are going to choose this event. So we want to definitely choose this one and then continue. You want to then connect your ChatGPT with your Zapier. You can do that by going to your OpenAI account and then creating an API key that that you then just simply copy and paste inside your Zapier. You're going to be prompted to do that over here. And so then if you're done, you can then just continue. And right now we are going to set up our action. And so for this, just to save time, I'm going to go inside my AI automation database where I store all my AI automations. And I'm trying to replicate this one, which is uploading and analyzing a file in your Zapier ChatGPT block. So we have done the Google Sheets and right now we are at the part where we are using ChatGPT, but we are using the conversation with assistant event. We have already done the trigger, which is the new spreadsheet. And right now I'm going to go and copy this prompt over here and paste it directly inside my message. In this case, you can see that the prompt is divided into three different parts. The first part is a context parameter. And so here I'm setting up a little bit more context for ChatGPT to give me better results. And then I'm writing the actual prompt. And lastly, I'm setting up details. In this parameter, we are going to make the output a little bit shorter because I don't want to get the whole output saying, right now I'm going to perform this, then I'm going to perform that, I'm going to analyze this and so on. So I write down, make sure your answer is short with no more than 1,500 characters. If if you want to know how you can write these prompts and how you can structure it with different parameters like I did here, then definitely go and check out the first link in the description down below where I put together a completely for free no giant resource that is going to teach you the 3P framework that I put together where you are going to discover how you can write these prompts with different parameters. All right, so then the next step is to choose your assistant. This one is a new field here as well. And so if you leave this empty, we will create a new assistant each time your zap runs using the fields below. So if you're setting up this for the first time you can just skip this part and then go and set up your assistant the main thing here is that you can actually
actually retrieve the previous assistance with these fields over here. And so then you can later on reuse them in your futures apps. So I'm going to leave that empty and continue with assistant name. I'm writing down data scientist. Then in the assistant instructions, I'm just setting up more background over here with uh, mostly the style. And I just mentioned that it should be easy to understand language. In the model section, it defaults to 3.5 turbo, but you can up this model, especially for data analysis. It's really good to use GPT-4. And then the new tools over here, we are getting into the files as well as the tools that Zapier has recently introduced. And so here, what you can do is that you can right now choose the code interpreter, which is basically the tool that analyzes the data for you. Right now, this is the tool that has been renamed to the advanced data analysis. So if I click on that one, you can see we have two different options. The first one is retrieval. So in this case, you can ask questions about a document. So that can be, for example, a PDF. But in our case, we want to analyze Google Sheets. So we are going to use the second option called the code interpreter. All right, so then next we have conversation ID. This is basically your memory key. And as Zapier writes down over here, if provided, this unique value will allow the assistant to continue your conversation from previous messages. And so for example, as they write over here, you should use something that won't change over the course of the conversation. And so for example, that could be a customer support ticket ID. If you don't fill it out, ChatGPT is not going to remember all the prior conversations. So in this case, because we are always analyzing a new sheet that is uploaded to Google Sheets, in theory, we wouldn't need to use this, but because it's always beneficial to set this up, I'm going to choose an ID that is always going to be specific for each file. And that is, for example, a title. So my sheets are always going to have different titles when they are uploaded to Google Sheets. And so this is going to allow me to always have different conversations with different files. And then the most important part is the new files section over here. What you want to do here is to include your dynamic variable from your trigger. In this case, it would be a CSV file. But if you click on this, you are going to see that you have many different options that you can choose from. And maybe it's super complicated to find the right dynamic variable. So here, just a quick tip for you is to start writing exist but not shown. And this is a quick tip how you can find files that are from your trigger. All the files that you are going to be working in your Zap are always going to have these brackets and the text inside the brackets is going to tell you that there is this file, but it's just not shown because I cannot show you inside Zap here. And so in this case, you get all the different formats from our trigger. So you want to choose the CSV file. I'm also going to show you the PDF, which is basically going to allow us to put that PDF directly inside our Slack message. So make sure to stay until the end of the video. So you want to choose the file CSV and we have existing files. So in this case, if you have already uploaded a file before, you are going to click on this and you're going to find out that there are files that you have previously used uh, somewhere else in your zaps, for example. So in this case, you can leave this empty because you are uploading a new file each time over here. And the last part over here, response instructions, you can leave this empty, but basically these instructions override the assistant instructions and can be specific to each message. We don't need that for this case, so we can just continue. And right now I'm going to test this action and after a few seconds, we are hopefully going to get a confirmation. All right, so we got the confirmation. The conversation was sent to ChatGPT about seven seconds ago. We got the green check mark over here. And if I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to go and search for the full response variable over here. And yeah, it seems like it worked. So uh, we have the analysis over here. The latest data set provided reflects the same contents as previous data said this is because i have retested this so it sent the same prompt twice to show you how this works and so then we get this nice summary with the main key insights with all the averages standard deviations and much more and then at the end we also get a nice summary here that is easy to understand and it provides a little bit more insights about the trends and patterns in the data set all right so right now when we have successfully tested this we can right now do pretty much anything with the output so you can either send it to yourself you can create a new file on your google doc you can send this to your colleague or post it in your channel on microsoft teams and so right now i'm going to quickly show you how you can post this inside your channel on your slack and so in the next action you want to choose slack 
and then in the event section you want to go and choose send channel message i'm going to continue you want to connect your slack account it's simply just again your credentials and you're good to go i'm going to continue the first thing you want to specify is the channel so i have created a new channel called weekly reporting so i'm going to choose weekly reporting and then in the message text you simply go to your conversation with your assistant and in this case you want to search for a dynamic variable called full response you want to insert that one and then basically you're good to go you can change the settings they are not really important uh, for example you can name your bot that is going to appear in your slack you can change the icon of the bot but then i think the most important thing here is that you would want to get the overview of how the data set looks like so what I thought would be interesting to go inside this file section over here. And in this case, I'm going to go and insert the PDF file directly inside my Slack message. So then anyone who reads this quick analysis can also get the overview of how the data set looks like. So once again, inside Trigger, you have many different dynamic variables that you can choose from. But you right now know that you can just search for exist, but not shown. And in this case, instead of CSV file, let's go with file PDF and insert that one over there. All right, so then you are pretty much done and you are going to continue. And right now we are going to test this, whether it works. So you can see that I have created a new channel over here and it's called weekly reporting. You can see that there are no messages at this current time, but I'm going to test this action and hopefully we're going to get the message on our Slack. All right, so we got a green confirmation over here. A send channel message was sent to Slack about two seconds ago. So if I go here, you can see that it has worked. We got the quick analysis from ChatGPT over here where it looked at the data and analyzed it for us. It wrote down the numbers, key insights, as well as patterns, and then a small summary as well. But we also have the PDF file over here. You can just simply click on the PDF file and then you are going to be shown how the data set looks like. All right, so right now we know that everything works. So right now I'm going to do the last settings as well as talk about the errors that you can get. So in this corner over here, you want to give your Zap a name. I'm just going to name it Google Sheets, ChatGPT file and Slack to quickly get an overview about what this Zap is doing. And then lastly, what error you might get. For example, when you are testing this in your ChatGPT, what I have encountered is this error that you can see right now on your screen. And so this one is basically telling you there was a a timeout so that means that the prompt with the file was sent to chat gpt but zapier was not able to get the answer back within a certain period of time most likely it's around 60 seconds and if it doesn't get the answer from chat gpt it's then going to give you this error and that's why i would encourage you to include the details parameter over here that is going to tell chat gpt that the maximum answer should be no longer than 1500 characters another thing you might encounter is that the test is going to be successful but in this full response uh, variable you might get something like i was not able to upload the data set and analyze it sorry for the inconvenience right now at this moment i cannot do that try to re-upload the file what i found out that works is that you simply just want to go to your trigger once again and find a new file or new record over here choose that one instead and then repeat the whole process i found out that this has helped also renaming the file and starting over uh, worked for me as well. All right, but when you are done, you can simply go and click on publish and then you on a regular basis, each time you upload a new file on your Google Sheets are going to send a new prompt to ChatGPT with that specific file as well. ChatGPT is going to analyze it and then it's going to post the analysis with the PDF file to your Slack channel as well. Now, if you want to know how you can write prompts directly inside Zapier in your ChatGPT block, you might have seen that it's a little bit different i'm setting up different parameters like context style details and so on make sure to go in the first thing in the description down below where you can get a totally free no junk resource that i put together where i show you how you can write these prompts directly inside zapier if you also want to get the database here with the exact apps that you have to use the trigger event as well as the prompt that you can just copy and paste inside your chat gpt blog go into the first thing in the description down below and you will find it over there now, if you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything new, please give this video a thumbs up. And I believe if you enjoyed watching this video, you are also going to enjoy watching this one that you can see right now on your screen. Thank you so much and have a great day.